What's going on guys, it's High, and here in Washington it's looking like the good sunny weather is coming around more and more consistently. And for me that means I'm going to be spending a lot more time on the road, traveling, going to these great, grander landscape photography locations, and ultimately that means I'm going to be spending a lot of time sleeping on location. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I've set up my truck to be a makeshift camper that maximizes the comfort level at a minimum cost. Now this is a setup that I've developed for myself over the years and I'm not making this video to tell you that this is what you should do for your camper truck because some of the things that I'll show you may not even be beneficial to you. So use what you see in this video as a guide and something to build upon for yourself. I should mention that what I'm about to show you is what I consider a temporary setup. If you are a permanent car or truck dweller, there are a lot of things that you can and should change that would make your life a lot easier. I personally have only slept in my truck for about two weeks at the most and for a time span of a few weeks I think this setup works pretty well at least for me. My setup is really geared towards comfort and if you are a full-time car dweller you probably want to look at maximizing space which is definitely something that I have not done. So again this setup is really only for those who are looking for a temporary solution something that they can use over the weekend a couple days a couple weeks and this setup works out pretty well but if you're looking for something permanent this is really not the setup for you. First off, let's talk about the vehicle. I'm personally using a Ford Ranger for this setup. The make and model isn't really important, neither is the type of vehicle really. You could use a sedan, minivan, whatever you want. I chose to use a truck because I felt that it provides me with the most space, but the truck does have its drawbacks. First being that the whole back end is completely exposed, so you need a truck canopy or something similar. To me the truck canopy is probably the most important thing in this entire build. Having a nice one with various little upgrades would be nice and add to the comfort, but I'm going to be honest, I cheaped out on my canopy and just picked one up used from OfferUp. I didn't think that it was worth it to buy a new truck canopy that costs 1000 or 1500 when the truck itself was picked up for relatively cheap. If you have a nice truck and want everything to look factory, then sure, treat yourself to a nice canopy if you have the money. Also a canopy can be extremely useful in day to day use so I highly recommend one in general. Either way, if you pick up a canopy I would suggest that you get one with windows that are able to open and close to help negate condensation when you sleep in the bed. Also I would highly recommend you get a canopy that is able to be locked for very obvious reasons just to keep you and your possessions a lot safer. Window tint isn't absolutely necessary but also highly advised so that you can be a bit more incognito at night or just with the stuff inside your bed in general. Another thing to think about with a truck is the bed length itself. You really want a bed length that will accommodate for your height. If you're 6 foot tall you're probably not going to want to be sleeping in a 5 foot short bed unless you can get used to sleeping with bent legs. Next let's talk about insulation and because you're working with a truck bed that's elevated off of the ground you'll be able to stay a bit warmer than if you were to just lay on the ground but there are a few things that you can do to increase the overall warmth. One way is to add some sort of matting to the bed of your truck and you can approach this in various ways. If you're looking for warmth I would probably just go to a local store and buy some carpeting and depending on the kind that you get that could be relatively inexpensive down to like a dollar per square foot. So you don't really need much you only need enough to cover the bed of your truck so that could be like 20, 30, maybe 40 bucks depending on the type of carpeting that you get. So again this can be relatively inexpensive. In my truck I went with a dedicated rubber truck mat and this is really designed to protect the truck bed from scratches but as you can see I actually have bed liner on the bed of my truck. I'm personally not all that worried about extra insulation and in my case I'm actually using the mat as sort of an anti-slip and protection for anything that I've actually put in the bed because the bed liner of my truck bed is actually very aggressive. It's one of the most aggressive truck bed liner I've ever seen. If you put something down and you don't carefully like tie it down so that it doesn't move everywhere once you start driving around, it'll move around and it'll completely get scratched up on this bed liner. So again, the truck mat is really to protect everything else besides the actual truck. Next let's talk about the sleeping situation and again my setup is really geared towards comfort but cheap comfort so I personally went with an air mattress. My truck has a 6 foot bed and I personally found that it was somewhat difficult to find an air mattress that actually fits inside of my truck bed, well at least a traditional air mattress. If you're unaware some manufacturers actually make a truck bed specific air mattress and in terms of fitment these work the best because once you pump them up they cover everything over the wheel well, little nooks and crannies, they fit perfectly. I used to have one of these and really only used it for one or two night camping trips but ultimately got rid of it because like I said it covers everything the entire bed so if you want to use one of these air mattresses 
you kind of have to get used to laying down with your stuff all around you if you actually do carry other stuff, which is the plan when you go on one of these adventures. On the other hand, if you use a traditional rectangle air mattress, you essentially just take up the center strip of space on a truck bed. So you have all the sides on the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. You have all the extra space for stuff. So I personally prefer this setup. Another reason for going with a traditional air mattress is because of the price. While it's nice to have a truck bed specific air mattress that fits very well, you are really paying for that with the prices going up to 100, 200 bucks for these truck bed specific air mattress. Well, I personally just went to Walmart, picked up an air mattress for like eight bucks when it was on sale, and then another five bucks for the air pump that goes specifically to your car socket. So relatively inexpensive compared to the truck bed specific air mattress. Then as far as sheets, bedding, pillows, and all of that stuff, I just use what I already have at home because there's no point in buying, well, you can buy new sheets and beddings and everything for your new air mattress if you really want, but I personally would rather just save the money and use what I already have. I also like to do this because I feel that if you're using the same pillows and blankets and all of that stuff, it helps to make the truck feel a little bit more like home and just little things like that can really help when you're on the road and you're having a hard time falling asleep. Having a comfortable, familiar feel really helps. However, if you plan on sleeping in your truck in the winter or just in really cold climates, I do recommend bringing along an extra sleeping bag or just really go at it with the extra blankets because it can get really cold in the back of the truck bed depending on where and when you camp. I remember the first time that I took one of these truck camper trips and I was at Yellowstone National Park in the winter. It was the coldest night of my life. It was so unbearable until I finally just zipped myself inside of my sleeping bag, covered myself in my blankets, and then it became somewhat manageable. So again, if you are unprepared for sleeping in the cold, it will be miserable. Next, let's talk about food and cooking. And this section can kind of be just skipped over depending on the way that you travel. When I travel, I like to bring along a butane stove and a hot water maker. And these are just things that I've had around the house in case of emergencies, but they never really get used. So when I go on these truck camper trips, I like to just bring it along just for the sake of it, just to get some use out of it. The stove is nice because it's a stove. You can really use it for whatever stove purposes you have. You can make eggs and Again, it's just a stove. You can cook whatever you want. So that's always nice to have when you're in the middle of nowhere. The hot water maker is kind of unnecessary because again, I already have the stove, so it's redundant. I can make hot water on the stove. But I do like to have the hot water maker around because it, it's faster, it's dedicated. I can make hot water really quick while I'm on the road, pull over on the side, and then just pour in some instant noodle, make a cup of coffee, make a cup of tea, whatever. So the hot water maker is nice because it, I just find it faster. Neither of these things are really necessary unless you're really camping out in the middle of nowhere. Most of the time I'm going to be road tripping so I'll be on highways and smaller roads passing through cities. So if I wanted to I can just stop by anywhere and just pick up some food. It's not really that big of a deal. So to me these things are really more for the emergencies and for when you actually plan to be off road and away from the cities. Okay if you're a normal person and you're watching this video I'm sure that you're wondering how would one approach hygiene and personal care. Like I said, a lot of what I do is just road tripping. So along the way, there will be rest stops. And at these rest stops, there will be bathrooms and running water. So you can manage smaller things like brushing your teeth, just washing your face and this and that. However, these rest stops will generally not have showers. So if you want a better, <laughs> deeper clean, you're gonna have to figure something else out. Through some trial and error, I have found that wet wipes can really be your best friend when you're doing this type of traveling. When you have some time to stop and really just wipe yourself down. And this is a pretty effective way of getting yourself clean at a relatively inexpensive price. An alternative and what I would recommend if you're willing to spend some extra money would be to pick up the various products from this company called Clean Life and specifically their no rinse line of products. So this product line is pretty amazing and the whole idea behind the no rinse is that you can get yourself clean without the use of water. For example, with this shampoo, all you have to do is spray some in your hand and your scalp, lather it in, it'll foam up like traditional shampoo, and then you just have to towel dry and then let it dry. And then you're done without the use of any water and you're able to get yourself clean. So when you're outdoors and spending a lot of time away from the shower, this is a great alternative. 
The last thing that I want to highlight for this makeshift truck camper rig is a battery inverter. And this essentially just converts your car's outlet battery into usable AC power. With the battery inverter, there are many different sizes and output powers that you can choose from, but I personally just went with a smaller 400 watt one because that works for my needs. Just consider what you need to run power off of and then go from there. For me, having the battery inverter is critical because it allows me to charge up all of my batteries and various devices while I'm on the road. Alternatively, you can just go to a restaurant or some other place with an outlet that you can use and charge everything up, but I personally would rather save the possible hours that it would take to just charge everything up while I can be on the road enjoying the scenery rather than sitting someplace watching batteries charge. I also travel around with a few different battery power banks, but I consider these to be a last resort and for emergencies because I don't want to rely on them because ultimately they are batteries, they will die out. And if I rely on them and they happen to die out, I will be screwed if I can't recharge them. So I would use the power inverter first while I drive around all day and just charge everything up if I needed to. And then in case of emergencies or at night when the car is off and I can't use the inverter, I will switch over to the battery power banks. And that is just about everything that goes into my truck camper rig. Like I said, the stuff that I've shown in this video is really developed for myself and it's what works for me and it may not work for you. So really, like I said at the beginning of this video, it's a rough guideline, a rough blueprint for you to follow, but you should really build upon it to make this rig set up your own. I hope you have enjoyed this video and it helped you out. If it did, give it a thumbs up, share this video around, comment down below with any thoughts or questions, comments, whatever you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.